Okay, so recall what acceleration is. This is some previous notes that we've taken. Acceleration is defined as the rate at which object changes its velocity. Okay? So for an object moving, the displacement time graph would look like what? Would it look linear? Would it look quadratic? Or look like a sh flat line? What would it look like? What would a position time graph look like for an accelerating object? It would be nonlinear. Okay. Here's an example of that. Okay. For a displacement time graph that looks quadratic in nature, the corresponding VT graph will be linear growing or linear shrinking, however the acceleration is occurring. And then in physics 20 and 30, you will always have this situation where the acceleration is constant. Okay? So from a curved DT to a linear VT to a constant AT. Those are all connected. Okay? We're going to connect this idea with acceleration of a moving object into this section for 2.2, and we're going to start talking about this thing called free fall. Okay, so moving up in the notes to where we left off. Alright, so you can title this page Free Fall. Okay, Free Fall. This is when you jump off a cliff. Right? What happens to you? Do you rise up into the sky or do you fall down to your timely demise? Okay, <laughs> so an object being acted upon by the force of gravity only. Now, this is what physics often does is it it creates an ideal situation. So what are we ignoring when you the force of gravity only? Good. So we just ignore air resistance. Drag. Yep. Exactly. Air resistance ignored. Okay. And um, the acceleration due to gravity on this planet of Earth has a value that ranges depending on where you are on the planet, how close you are to the center of the mass, which is the Earth. Are you high up on a mountain? Are you close to sea level? It changes, but in this class we'll just assume it's 9.81 meters per second squared down. Okay, so we'll just assume that acceleration is always this number, 9.81, and the unit for acceleration is always meters per second per second. And acceleration of gravity is always acting down because it acts, there's a field uh, going on, a gravitational field that always points to the center of the Earth. It points radially inward. So for us experiencing this on the, like, the surface of the Earth, it's, it just always points down. And everybody knows this, you know, you throw something up in the air, it comes down. So let's draw a little picture. This is uh, Fred at the top of the cliff. He's contemplating life. <laughs> and this is actually Fred after Physics 20 is done, and he's got his notebook in his hand, and he drops it off the cliff. He's like, I don't want my notes anymore. Okay, so what happens? What would this diagram look like? Would the, think of it as like the ticker tape 
uh, the object diag like every interval, every like point one of a second, what would this look like? Yeah, so are the dots closer together as at the beginning or farther apart at the beginning? Yeah, closer together. So it starts to fall. Starts and these are all at the same these images are occurring at the same instant of time. Okay, so it starts to speed up. And everybody knows that. Now you'll always continue to speed up um, because of this acceleration. But in reality, there's this thing called terminal velocity. I think we had a conversation about this last year, didn't we, Jordan? Terminal velocity? Do you remember that? Question? No, um, and can actually survive the terminal velocity. Like fall from outer space. Mm -hmm. and That's awesome. They can survive out. That's awesome. Yeah, so there is, there is some point where the, uh, the air resistance matches the gravitational force and you you actually stop gaining speed um, but you know for the most part you continually are going to be gaining speed okay <coughs> so let's just jot that down we're speeding up as object falls and because we're dealing with free fall we don't we don't consider that situation you just assume you're always going to be gaining speed you're speeding up as the object falls down. So as the m if the motion of the object is down and you're speeding up, because it's in the same direction, this is like a conclusion. You can say, okay, well, acceleration is down. It almost reinforces, okay, why is gravitation always down? Well, you speed up as you go down. Okay, and what happens if I throw a ball up in the air? It speeds down down right if I throw a ball up in the air it loses speed so that must mean the acceleration vector always points down okay and we have a special name for a a is the acceleration of gravity and we even have a special letter for it little g little g okay and we can even give you a little snapshot of what's to come in unit two. You guys know this uh, famous formula? Good. So the force, whoa. The force due to gravity will be mg. And that, you're going to use that formula a lot in the next coming weeks. Probably after, probably in October. Newton's second law, yep. Okay. So acceleration is the rate at which blank changes for an object. What is that blank? Careful. Velocity, good. So let's get a formula for our acceleration due to gravity. So if it is, so there's some serious glare coming off my screen here. Good call. All right, so A is a equals a is okay the rate at which velocity changes so we need delta v over t okay and this is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second per every one second so every one second you're going to gain 9.81 meters per second of speed in the downward direction. Okay, we'll build a chart. We'll match it to this diagram. And you should have a pretty good understanding of acceleration due to gravity. So just tell me when I can move on. Good? 
Non Good Good Okay, so if we were to graph time versus velocity at zero seconds, zero velocity, you haven't dropped it yet. You say you drop it, one second in, okay, so let's just put seconds and meters per second above. One second in, your speed would be negative 9.81. Two seconds in, what will your speed be? Good. Three in. 29.43. What am I doing here? Co every second I'm subtracting or adding negative 9.81, right? Every second I add a negative 9.81. And I think these are good. I can't remember if I used a calculator here. So you can double check those numbers for me. So you can see quite clearly, as time moves on, velocity is growing. Or in this case, speed, if I didn't put a bar above it. Let's put a bar above it. Velocity. Okay. So Fred, standing on that cliff, contemplating physics. He's got his notes in his hands. He drops them. Right there, he's in his hand. That's his hand, by the way. <laughs> T is zero, and sp initial speed is zero. He hasn't dropped it yet. And we're going to do questions like this uh, in the word problems. It'll say, um, a young person drops his homework from the edge of a cliff. You need to know that the initial velocity is zero. Okay. One second in, it's going negative 9.81. Two seconds in, it's going negative 19.62, and so on, okay? So that's free fall. So, what would the graphs look like this for this? If we were to draw a position time graph for this, and we assume that the ground is the reference point. With the ground being the reference point, and if we were to draw a position time graph, what would it look like? First of all, would it be curved or would it be linear? Okay, so we know it should be curved because it's accelerating. And do I start high up on the y-axis or do I start low up in the y-axis? Yeah. Because we're so many meters above the ground, which is the reference point. Okay, so, and then we know that is it speeding up or speeding down as time goes on? Speeding up. So what would our tangents look like? They would start off more flat or more steep? They would start off more flat and then they would start to get more steep. So that's the general sketch that it would have. You would have something that goes like like this. It would be curved with these those lines that I drew are called tangents and I just like I just sketching them out you guys just to get a feel for it. So these are a you know, approximate tangents. And the, the tangents at a specific point, what are, the, the, what are those called? We talked about it yesterday. It starts with I. In instantaneous velocity. So at each moment, there's some speed, right? And those tangents represent those speeds in the moment. Okay? Any questions so far?
Okay, so it's speeding up. It's curved. Curved DT anyway. Okay, well, let's see if I can. No. Okay, let's. Uh, I want to. I'm going to erase this because I want to put the VT graph right next to it. Okay, so what would the VT graph look like? What would the VT graph look like? Where would it start? Good. So it starts at zero. Give that a second to sink into your head. Why does the VT graph start at zero? Holding something in your hand? Does it have any velocity? Then I drop it. It gains speed as it falls. So it's going to gain speed, so it should move away from the x-axis. Do I go in the up direction or down direction as time goes on? Good. So there's an approximation for the VT graph. You're speeding up. You start at rest. Here, I'll zoom in for you guys. Whoops. Start at rest. Speed up. And remember from the, yes, the other day's notes, you, if you're speeding up, you're moving away from the x-axis. And what would the slope of this line be? Excellent, Jordan. And this is, this M represents the slope of the line, not the meters, not the mass. So maybe we just put slope instead of M. It gets confusing. M is more for math, hey? Let's just put slope. You guys okay on the uh, position time in the VT graphs for a free fall? All right. So if I can move on, I'll move on. So hopefully you're starting to see that the graphs are quite important at the beginning of Physics 20. And on your exam, there will be a good chunk of it that's dedicated to graphs and interpreting, interpreting them. Okay, so the velocity of a free-falling object depends on what? Good. Depends on how long it's been falling. And everybody knows this. You ever jump off like the, the third or fourth tower at a swimming pool? <laughs> you, you can feel yourself falling and you're like, oh my gosh, right? So, if we connect this to our understanding of what the graph's mathematical relationship is, y equals mx, because we know the VT graph on the previous set of notes was, on the previous page, it was linear. We know the VT graph is linear, so y and x. y depends on x, velocity depends on time. v depends on t. So what is the value for m? What did we say it was on the last page? Negative 9.81. So we can just put g there. And that will be your final velocity depends on the acceleration times the time. And of course, this is when dropped from rest. Because you could throw it down. You could throw it up. S different stuff could happen. In the case where you throw it up, it would be similar. But when you throw it down, you're going to give it some initial speed and it would, it would alter this uh, formula. 
Okay, so let's uh, let's just get the formulas that are used in your workbook. You got acceleration being delta V over delta T. This is the slope formula for a uh, VT graph. So if you were to take the slope of a VT graph, and we did this yesterday in the workbook, okay, you're basically taking like V2 minus V1 over T2 minus T1. No. Whatever it is. Because we're busy. Sorry. Okay, so for acceleration, we'll instead of using V2, V1, we'll use V final and V initial. And typically you just say over T. Like T2 minus T1 is just the time interval T. Okay? So if T2 was 10 and T1 was 5, 10 minus 5 is 5, th you just put T. T is a 5 second interval. So this is a formula that we're all going to be using. Okay? So this formula, get to know it. It's the uh, first kinematics formula you're going to get to know. So let's isolate for VF. So we can cross multiply. We get AT equals VF minus VI. And then we will move the VI over with addition. AT plus VI equals VF. And what you have here is y equals mx plus b. And if you recall from math 10, what's that b? Y the y-intercept. And that will be your initial velocity. So your initial velocity. So not too hard. So velocity depends on time. It's linear. It's mx plus b, and here we go with this at plus vi. Uh, but for the most part, when you're solving problems in my class, um, this is the one we're going to be using. I just want to show you that it's linear. Now let's talk about distance. So... So distance that uh, free-falling object, distance that a free-falling object, uh, what's the word, distance that a free-falling object like experiences or incurs or whatever experiences, it depends on time as well. So how far you travel also depends on the time but it's not linear if you look back on the previous page it's quadratic so a quadratic would have a power 2 in the formula and when it comes to our kinematics equations it's going to look like this 1 half at square displacement equals 1 half at square and this is when dropped from rest. When you get your formula sheet from me, you'll have some formula that looks very similar to this. It'll have a VIT in there as well, but the initial velocity is zero, so it'll disappear. So this is the formula for a free falling object. Displacement equals, uh, or I have distance there, so you could take that bar off. My bad. Just take that bar off. Just D, distance. We'll talk about just distance. So if it's dropped from rest, this means that VI is zero. And the actual kinematics formula that you're going to be using in the formula sheet goes like this. VIT plus one half AT square. So you can think of this sort of uh, as like a quadratic formula. Do you guys remember factoring? I'll write it on, I'll write it on the whiteboard. Do you remember th this formula? ax squared plus bx plus c. You remember these? 
So you factor those in math 10. In math 20, you learn how to work with the graphs. And so you can see that the one half a, one half acceleration is like this coefficient a. And then this vit is like your bx. So, so the t is the independent variable. So t is x. And then your one half a represents this coefficient, and your vi represents b. And C is just going to be some uh, constant, uh, so some initial displacement. But you don't really have to worry about that. We're not going to have to deal with that. OK. Um, did people still need that page? Oh, we're good. OK, I'll put it right up right now. Sure. Yeah, yeah, this, is, this formula is good. This formula is good, yeah. And you're going to get a formula sheet, and we're going to talk more about these formulas later. I'm just sort of introducing them. Yeah. Yeah, and, th and those would be velocities. Yeah, so if you want, you put these bars on. Um, okay, so the big misconception. This is something we should think about. Do... So this is a thinking question. Do more massive objects accelerate faster than less massive, like an elephant versus uh, a feather? Do, does an elephant accelerate faster than a feather? if both dropped at the same time. So gravity actually acts on both objects the same. And in a free fall condition, you don't think about air resistance. So th they actually accelerate at the same rate. It's just that, yeah. Good. They, uh, the air resistance plays a huge factor, like if it's a feather versus like a bowling ball. Okay, obviously the bowling ball will, will reach the ground faster because of air resistance. Right, less surface area. Um, they actually have the same acceleration, and we just, that's for free fall conditions. Okay, and then uh, to Ethan's point, Force divided by mass equals acceleration. So if you have a bigger mass, all it means is you have a bigger force. And that's all that means. And A will remain constant for this relationship. Okay? Question? Yeah, and like w we're just talking free fall, right? So we ignore, yeah. And w like terminal velocity isn't actually mentioned in high school physics at all. <laughs> okay, so that's it for the notes for today. That's for free fall. Yep. So I'll just bring your attention to, you want more notes? Yeah. I feel like we could give you a quiz right now. Okay, I love your excitement. Okay, I just want to bring your attention to this page. So this is where we are currently in our workbooks. Um, if you haven't got the 2.1 solutions, that's everything covered up to 2.2. You can come pick it up. Um, if we look at our workbook, 
Do we know this one? We just took notes on this one, right? Okay, so we know our formula for acceleration. Uh, we will only work with uniform acceleration in high school, uh, so constant acceleration only. It is a vector, so accelerations have, have direction. I'll just bring your attention to these diagrams at the bottom. So if the velocity vector and the acceleration vector are in the same direction, you will, of course, speed up. And if your velocity direction is opposing your acceleration vector, you will speed down. Okay. If you want to just write down a little note on this, we can. So this is like driving. This is like foot on the pedal. You press the pedal. You're already driving a certain direction, and then you speed up by pressing the pedal. Now, this one would be if you press the brake. Okay. Now, these formulas here, I'm going to give you a couple pages of notes on them. Uh, I think it's kind of weird just to smash some equations in your face and say use them. Um, so we'll, we'll do that tomorrow. Friday fun day will be kinematics equations. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Math test. So make sure you know this. Okay, instantaneous velocity. You might even want to put right here slope of tangent line. And then you can see how this uh, book goes into free fall. That's why I gave you those free fall notes. And they have what I think is an excellent place for you to summarize this understanding. You have this non-uniform velocity curve graph. You have linear VT and then constant AT. Crucial for your understanding. Okay, so let's take a look at some of these things that they're giving us. So we've talked about this. Uh, we've talked about this. Okay. So area under a graph for VT. So let's suppose we had this, this shape. How would you go ahead and calculate that area? Okay, Hamza has mentioned that we will create a triangle and a rectangle and add it up and that's good. So basically what are your units for the Y and what are the units for the X? So you have meters per second times seconds. What happens with the units there? No. Meters per second times seconds. The seconds cancels and you're left with that's what we want, right? Displacement. What about under the AT graph? What if we did area under an AT graph? You'd have the Y times the X for area. So what's the units for A? Meters per second square. And then we would times it by time, which is in seconds. Only one of the seconds will cancel. You're left in meters per second, which is exactly velocity. So you can kind of use unit analysis to sort of interpret what area under the graph would represent. Okay. Now the questions start. Um, we will actually take these up tomorrow. I'm going to go print you guys a quiz. So I'm going to give you guys two or three minutes to review the notes and yesterday's stuff. And I'm going to give you guys a, a quiz.